The fifth work in Tchaikovsky's children's album is the famous March of the Wooden Soldiers. This may be one of the most frequently played pieces from the work. There's a good reason for that. The notes are just not that complicated and a piece is short and repetitive and can almost be taught by rote. But it presents a number of pedagogical challenges which will serve the young pianist um, for the rest of their lives. The first thing to consider is dotted rhythms. I find dotted rhythms to be one of the most challenging things to teach. The math of a dotted rhythm is really quite simple. The long note to short note ratio is three to one. Long, short, long, short. The trouble is that in reality, this rhythm doesn't always sound correct. So here it is applied to the march. neither marchy nor fun. So that in reality, most dotted rhythms need to be over dotted, meaning that the long note is longer and the short note is shorter. We can think of it as almost a double dot, but explaining the math of a double dot to a seven-year-old is um, daunting. It is much easier to think of the short note as some kind of a grace note to the following long note, something like this. Doesn't that sound much more like a jaunty sort of a march? There is a further complication, thank you, Peter Litschikowski. Do you notice that first we have a legato, then there is a little rest. We see lots of these little rests after dotted rhythms in, let's say, Chopin mazurkas, right? So we have to learn how to do that. I think as in Chopin Mazurkas, the little rests here are meant to be a little bit longer than their mathematical value. Breath. Right? I, of course, am exaggerating, but you can hear how much more brightness um, this adds to the character. also deal with repeated notes, again, an articulation that was important to Tchaikovsky. Here's the awful truth about the repeated notes. We are completely dependent on the piano. Either the mechanism of the piano works great and the keys come up to allow you to play them again, or they don't, in which case you're a little bit out of luck. Still, we should think about the techniques that allow us to sort of increase our chances of um, getting the repeated notes to speak. My favorite method is to think about flicking each of the fingers off the key. Did you notice my technique? Did you notice how active my fingers were? I do not guarantee 100% success. If you have a piano where the keys don't come up very fast, not gonna happen. The last aspect I want to discuss in the March of the Wooden Soldiers is the overall dynamic structure. Because the piece is short, very often people don't bother creating any sort of variations in the structure. But if you look at the dynamics, the piece begins and ends with a pianissimo. So how do we create a pianissimo? On a modern instrument, starting let's say around the time of Chopin and Liszt, I profoundly believe that when a composer puts down a pianissimo, that composer means, please use the una corda, the left pedal. This gives us a lot more than just softness. Because of the way the piano is made, um, when we press down the left pedal, we are getting a great deal less resonance and sympathetic vibrations from the strings. So the sound is much less bright and more matte. And this way, when we lift the left pedal off, even if we're not any louder, the sound changes just enough to create more interest. So in the first phrase, we are pianissimo. 
then at some point we are piano, then we are mezzo forte, and then the soldiers march gently back away into the pianissimo. I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. If you have more, please leave them in the comments. Happy practicing.